All right, guys, welcome back into part two of my little series with different scenarios for the 2024 uh, election. And we've got a doozy today here. We've got Kamala Harris, the current VP, taking on Donald J. Trump. And guys, these are realistic scenarios on what I think would happen if these candidates did face off. Of course, if I'm being real, I think there is less than a 0% chance Kamala Harris would ever be the Democratic nominee. She somehow has a worse approval rating than Joe Biden. And of course, she at least is a woman and is a minority. And she still has a worse approval rating than Joe Biden. And listen, say what you want about Biden. At least he can fall back on I'm a white old male. Everyone hates white old males now. You know, the fact that Kamala has a worse approval rating and she's a minority woman, that shows you how bad and disliked this woman really is. Um, you know, and, and we saw in the primaries for the 2020 election, the Democrats really try and push her and she got destroyed on the debate stage. She's a really bad talker. Really bad with communication, so I don't think Kamala Harris would ever uh, be the Democratic nominee. Once again, guys, I do think it'll be either Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom or someone else, not Pete Buttigieg, not Biden, and not Kamala Harris. I think they're going to get Kamala. They're going to get Biden out after the midterms happen, probably early 2023, and then Donald Trump. You know, obviously one of the favorites in it is the favorite in the Republican. Uh, primaries, uh, either him or DeSantis, and there could be an issue for the Republicans if Trump loses to DeSantis. You know, he, we know how bullheaded he is. We know his ego. The, the the horror scenario is that Trump runs kind of a third party ticket because he's mad he lost the Republican primary, which would basically give the Democrats the White House. Uh, we're seeing Andrew Yang try and do a third party, and it's just disgusting how the Democrats are bullying him because they're just so obsessed with the White House. And it's like, yes, let's reelect Democrats who just put us into a horrible recession. Of course, it's not a recession. We changed the definition of recession. It's not a recession. Uh, that's always great. But guys, this is just a normal prediction on what I think would happen. We've already got Kamala with 183. We've got Trump with 157. All of these states, uh, you know, this little district, I don't know. You know, I'd have to see the polling. Maybe Trump could take it. But overall, I think these would be the swing states with many of these states already decided. They're just either so Democrat or so Republican. But let's get to all the swing states. So Nevada, uh, I think Trump takes Nevada fairly easily. Arizona, I think Trump takes that as well. Texas, I don't even, I really don't think Texas is a swing state. I know Democrats are trying to make it the new Georgia but it's just not close enough in terms of overall margins. Trump won it fairly comfortably in 2020 when there was a narrative that the Democrats might flip it. I understand you've got all the people moving from California to Texas and they're moving because they, you know, these people are very far liberal. They're electing far left people and the leftist ideologies, which are soft on crime, are creating just complete hell holes in California. So they move away from it, but then they still vote for the same people. So that's a, that's another issue. We got to start, you know, educating some of these people on it. But either way, I know Austin is getting more, is, is really liberal and more people that are liberal are moving into it, but I don't think it's going to be enough to change Texas to become, especially if Kamala is running. Let's be honest, Trump would win Texas by 15, 20 points if Kamala is running. She is extremely unlikable. Minnesota is basically a talks up, but I want to be nice to Kamala. I want to be nice to her. We're going to give let her win that. Uh, Wisconsin would be Trump. Uh, Michigan, I think, is Trump. Ohio. Guys, I, I've said this, you know, Ohio is not a swing state. Trump easily won it in 2016. He easily won it in 2020. It is the one state in the Rust Belt that at this point is flipping Republican. All the other three swing are just complete swing states, in my opinion. Ohio is pretty clearly Republican at this point. Uh, and then Pennsylvania, I think Trump takes that as well. Virginia is interesting. Vir you know, Virginia is a state you would think would be kind of a Democratic strong stronghold. 
but there was a recent election, I think the governor election, where the Republican won. I am going to give it to Harris, though. Uh, North Carolina, I'll give to Trump. He won it both times in 2016 and 2020, although both times were really close. And then these little states up here, I'll give Trump Maine. And then I will give... Oh, Vermont's not even a... No, Vermont, Vermont is Democrat. And then I will give New Hampshire to uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, so that is that. And then... Oh, I almost missed it. The, the uh, microphone is blocking it. Florida, uh, Republican. It seems like Florida will always be relatively close, but the lead seems to be growing for the Republicans with the whole... DeSantis hype, things like that. It seems to be a more Republican state at this point. The way they handled the pandemic, how open they were, and you know Trump winning the state in 2020 and, tw and 2016. And the, uh, the Cuban vote in 2020 was eye-opening where Trump actually won more of that vote. So this would be the final thing. I I'm trying to be nice to uh, Kamala Harris here and give her mi a Minnesota, also Virginia. I mean, she's, she's got record horrible approval rating. She's a disaster on the debate stage. This is not be me being a Republican shill or anything like that. This is how it is. I mean, this woman is extremely disliked. Joe Biden has one of the worst approval ratings in the history of the presidency and, and Kamala is you know, for a time she was worse and she's got the whole, she's a minority woman. So some people are just automatically going to like her and she's still that bad. So it is tough. And, and if you're a Democrat, you know, she's not going to be running. Even if Biden, people keep saying Biden's not going to run in 2024. Yes, I agree, but it's not going to instill. People think, oh, it's going to be Harris because she's the vice president. That is not what's going to happen. They're going to have a total open primary or honestly, the Democrats blatantly rig their primary the last time to get Biden in. So they just might rig it for either Newsom or Michelle Obama. The way they do their primary is totally um, anti-democracy. I mean, you remember Super Tuesday with Biden being down by everything and then randomly everyone's dropping out of the race with all their super delegates and stuff. What a joke that is. So whoever the Democrats want, they will put up. And I think it's going to be Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama if she wants to run. If she wants to, that is their best candidate. Gavin Newsom had the recall in California because a lot of Republicans are saying, why would Gavin Newsom be the nominee if he was recalled in a liberal state like California? You only need like 10% to get a recall and that's what happened and he easily won it. Um, so I still think, you know, Gavin Newsom does have that charisma type thing. I mean, personally, I'm not a fan of him, but I understand why the Democrats would go with him. This is a very unlikely scenario here with Harris taking on Trump. Trump is the favorite for the Republicans. I'm just concerned if Trump loses uh, the situation that happens, does he get pissed? Does he try and run in a third party situation? Does Andrew Yang do anything when it comes to being a third party member? And guys, again, I mean, you see what's going on with Andrew Yang. He's trying to create this third party and he is getting just cyber bullied by Democrats who are just so obsessed with power. It's like you'd think these people would understand like, you guys, we, we voted you in, we did the whole thing and we've got a recession to thank for it. We've got these extremely left policies, all this green crap. Uh, we're not pumping our own gas and what do we have for it? Record high gas prices and a recession. But I guess it's not a recession because we can just change the definition. Like what do you expect is going to happen? You've got Joe Biden with record low approval ratings, somehow worse than Trump when 90% of the me mainstream media is on his side. You know, so there's these situations, guys, it's disturbing, uh, but I do not think Harris will be the nominee for the Democrats. I do think there is a greater than 50% chance Trump is the nominee for the Republicans, but there certainly is a chance Trump could lose. I'm not, people think it's a shoe in I think he could lose in the primaries, depending, and I think for the Republicans, like if this is DeSantis versus Harris, I think it's an even bigger blowout. If, it, if it's DeSantis, I think that happens. I think that happens honestly. But again, Harris is not going to be the Democratic nominee. This is just a mock scenario of what would happen uh, to the best of my ability. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, DJinx. Thank you for watching.